Are there really 1,000 chips in every box? Find out next on Junk Feud. Oh yeah! Welcome to Junk Feud, the podcast about junk food, where we rate and review mystery treats to determine which one will be the undisputed champion of snacks. I'm your host, Mike. Alongside me, as always, Alyssa. Hey, Dad. Hey, Liz. What do you call a belt with watches on it? What do you call a belt with watches on it? Oh, I have no idea. A waste of time. A waste of (laughs) time. Oh, come on. All right, that was pretty good. I like that one. A waste of time. (laughs) <laughs> where do you even find these that was a dad joke a joke you tell to your dad if you'd like to submit a dad joke for Alyssa to tell me on the show you can send it into us via twitter at junk feud pod or via email to junk feud pod at gmail.com Liz, yes welcome back once again to the world's geetest podcast welcome back are you uh finally over that boo-boo face that you had last week for the black jelly bean show yes yeah because you were really in a bad mood for that yeah i think that that's what made me sick You think eating black jelly beans made you sick? You missed two days of school last week. Yeah. And it was because of the licorice and the black jelly beans? Definitely. Like those people that had to be hospitalized for high blood pressure? Yeah, it it was all that. The glycoresia gave you a fever? Is that what it was? (laughs) Yeah. I'm sure it had nothing. Glycoresia fever. Glycoresia fever. I'm sure it had nothing to do with you and your friends staying up until three in the morning at your sleepover the night before. Yeah, because staying up late gives you fevers, Dad. I know. I sound like like a really old (laughs) person. The logic makes sense. Don't go outside. It's cold. You'll catch cold. Or if you stay up late, you're going to get a cough. That's right. Aunt Kathy told us once to close all the windows when it was raining because the lightning might come in. I think she I think she was actually right about that though. Really? Uh I don't know. Jury's still out on that. Anyway, we're bouncing back today. We've got a special treat. Liz. What? Before we get into the show proper, I want to talk about a little junk food adventure that we had lately. What? So remember when we were talking about going to th- to the store to get the stupid internet Gatorade that you and your friends love? Yes. We're talking of course about Prime Sports Drinks, the Sports drink brand co-promoted by Logan Paul and KSI of YouTube and other fame. Yeah. So this has become sort of a trend, hasn't it? Yeah. And I think we're at the end of the popularity of this trend right now for the prime sports drink. So I want to talk about what's been going on with it. You have been on the hunt to find prime sports drinks anywhere you possibly could. Well, they practically are everywhere now. We went to GNC. We went to the vitamin shop. We struck out at those places. You've been getting them. No, they were at the vitamin shop. Oh, that's right. But we didn't get any because we were looking for a very specific one. I got one. Which one did you get? The strawberry one. Strawberry. Oh, the one that tasted like the strawberry kiwi Snapple, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And what was the one that you were looking for most recently? Ice pop. Ice pop flavored. Yeah, it looks like the bomb pop. It's the red, white, and blue. Yeah. Liz, explain to me, please. What is so special about prime sports drinks aside from the fact that they're just popular because a youtuber promotes them to be honest i don't really know (laughs) it's just the thing where everyone was doing it yeah so the kids at your school kind of went a little bit nuts for these huh oh yeah can i tell the story about what adelia did yeah please do friend of the show adelia has become a little bit of an entrepreneur in her (laughs) spare time okay so there are kids in our school that would go crazy for it. Like, not even to drink it, but just to have, like, a bottle. It became it, a status symbol, sort yeah, of. because people are starting collections now for some reason. They're a little crazy. But anyway, she had, like, a bunch of grape. And I, I guess grape is hard to find or something like hmm. that. So she was able to sell an empty bottle, nothing in it, just an empty bottle of Prime for 8 yeah, our buddy Adelia has been selling empty bottles of sports drinks on <laughs> the bus $8. for twice as much as they cost new full. and full from the store. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So you've had, I think, all of the flavors now, haven't you? Except grape. Oh, you haven't had any grape. I don't want grape. You don't want grape. Oh, of course. So of the flavors that you had, let's get your unofficial official prime sports drinks rankings, please. Okay, so... Uh, the fruit punch one, the red one, uh-huh. is like an a, like a seven and a half. Well, oh, we're using a numbering system for these. Oh, oh, yeah, we can letter. use a numbering system. These can be the prime numbers. No, how was that? No, <laughs> no, we're not using funny. letter grades. <laughs> Come on, I thought sprinkles that was good. the fun dip. Okay, sprinkles so, the fun dip. Um, I would say, what would that be? Like a B plus, like a B B flat. B so, flat. <laughs> so just a B then. Yeah. Okay. And then orange would be like 
a B B. Straight B. Straight B. Also a B flat. Yes. I had the orange. I thought it was not too bad. It tasted a little bit like a creamsicle, I think, because of the Mm -hmm. inclusion of the coconut water in these. Makes it a little bit creamy. And then the strawberry kiwi one was like a B plus. It was really sweet, but it was good. Yeah. I think we should say all of these are like super, super super sweet. Super sweet. There is some sort of like artificial sweetener saccharin flavor in these that I just can't get over. It's like diet coke but ramped up to a thousand yes and then um ice pop is probably like an a minus a minus wow that's a that's a good rating and then what other ones are there oh blue oh blue was good blue is a flavor uh, the blue raspberry blue raspberry sure that was a good one you like it that was one? really sweet though of course they're all so, sweet how about meta moon that was something that was new ew. meta moon is not traditionally something f. we would consider a flavor <laughs> you're saying <laughs> f It was so bad. I tried it. It was very bad. I don't even really know what to say about it other than it was sort of salty and a little bit sour, but also very, very overpoweringly sweet. Yeah, I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it that much either. I don't know if I would have given it an F, but I will say overall, I didn't like any of these. I think buying $4 bottles of internet Gatorade is a little bit weird. Why? (laughs) Well, because you can get regular Gatorade, which is essentially the same thing. But do they have an ice pop flavor? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. We'll have to ask Mr. Gatorade the next time we see him. Okay. So anyway, I think the prime trend is over now, isn't it? Because like you can just get them at ShopRite. The grocery store has prime now. Yeah. (laughs) It's not a thing that's scarce. We don't have to go out of our way to strange gas stations in the middle of the night looking for this stuff anymore. Yeah. There's no like vitamin store employees that are going to intercept us at the door and say, if you're looking for prime, we ain't got any. Yeah. (laughs) We're done with this now. Yes. No. So we can say uh, bon voyage to Prime, I think, for the time being, right? Yeah, bon voyage. Bon voyage. And speaking of nautical slang list, that reminds me of this week's snack. Up next on Junk Viewed. Chips Ahoy. Yes. Liz, what do you know about Chips Ahoy? That you can only have five crunchy cookies. (laughs) You're only allowed to eat five at a time. (laughs) That's right. Spoiler alert for later. We're going to get into that. Liz, did you know Chips Ahoy is the most popular chocolate chip cookie brand? In America. That, yeah, probably. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's the one that you see all the time. They do about uh, $620 million in sales for Chips Ahoy every year based on some 2017 figures. It's the second most popular cookie overall in the world. Number one, of course. That's crazy. It's got to be Oreos, right? No. Yeah, number one in the world, Oreos. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. And Oreos and Chips Ahoy owned by the same company, actually. So these guys are like running the table here. One and two in order. Yeah. Yeah. Chips Ahoy are store-bought grocery store brand chocolate chip cookies based on the original 1936 Toll House chocolate crunch cookie recipe, which sort of like invented the genre. You know what I did once with Ella? What's that? We were trying to make our own cookies, but I was too lazy. Okay. So I crushed up Chips Ahoy cookies in a bowl. I added milk to make a batter and then just filled it with flour. So you took a cookie that was already (laughs) baked. Yes. And then you smashed it up into powder and made it into a cookie dough. Yes. Did you bake that again? Yes. How did it turn out? It tasted like flour. Yeah, not good, I would imagine. Yeah. Well, Liz, uh, had you been around in the 1960s, you could have invented the original Chips Ahoy with some weird uh, cookie alchemy <laughs> like that because Chips Ahoy cookies were invented by Nabisco in 1963. There is no single inventor that gets credit, which is you know, part and parcel for some of these uh, big industrial factory-based snacks. But, Liz, strangely enough, this is weird. Every online resource that I've found says that Chips Ahoy's cookies were invented in 1963, but on the Mondelez International page, like the big uh, giant food conglomerate that owns Nabisco, it says they were introduced in 1964. Oh. Yeah, I think they're just wrong, too. I think it truly is 1963, because Nabisco, this year, is advertising a contest for the 60th birthday of Chips Ahoy cookies. Wait, I was right. I was doing the math in my head on what year it would be if it was 60. Very good. Check your work. Uh, this year, they're releasing a birthday confetti cake flavor to of celebrate. Chips Ahoy? Of Chips Ahoy. That's right. Ew. We've Everything is getting a birthday cake flavor, isn't it? I don't. I'm not a fan of it. We had those party cake peeps last week. We didn't like those very much, did we? Uh-uh. They smelled better than they tasted. Yeah. Also, Liz, to celebrate their birthday and to continue the nautical theme, which we'll get to in a moment... You can win a trip to Miami to party on a Chips Ahoy branded yacht. Can we go? 
<laughs> if we win, I actually entered the contest yesterday. Really? I did, yeah. Whoa. That's, we're not going to win. But listen, <laughs> Liz, uh, what else was going on in 1963? Do you know? No. Well, you should because we already know what happened in 1963 because oh. that was the year... Pop-Tarts. That Pop-Tarts were invented. That's right. It was a big year for snack foods. Now, listen, instead of just rehashing the old stuff we said before, Lawrence of Arabia won Best Picture, Kennedy was assassinated, et cetera, et cetera, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I did a thing. Uh, I asked Chat GPT what snack foods were invented in 1963. You remember what Chat GPT is, right? Uh, No. It's a uh, large language model. And artificial intelligence, we talked about it a little bit on the Pink Sauce episode because it was invented last year. It came out in November. Oh. Anyway, so you can ask chat GPT questions and it's like a chat bot that will respond to your queries. So I asked it what other snack foods were invented in 1963, like Chips Ahoy were, and it gave me this whole big list. It said it was uh, Pringles, Bugles, Doritos, and Chex Mix. You know what's funny about all that? What? None of that is true. Oh. (laughs) Yeah, uh, it gave me a hallucination, a list of snack foods that were not invented, in fact, in 1963. Pringles were invented in 1968. Bugles came out in 1964. Doritos also 1964. And then Chex Mix, of course, uh, which we talked about on one of our holiday episodes, 1952. So here's what I did, Liz. Since it's a chat bot, you can talk back to it. And I said, hey, uh, you're wrong, (laughs) obviously. None of these came out in 1963. And do you know what it did? What? It said sorry. It apologized like really profusely. Oh, I'm, I apologize. I'm very sorry for that. Here, in fact, is a list of snacks that actually did come out in 1963. <laughs> and then it gave me another list with Jif peanut butter and pixie sticks and whistle pops and Cap'n Crunch on it. And guess what? What? Almost all of those were wrong too. Except? Except Cap'n Crunch, which actually was invented in 1963. Uh, wow. Jif peanut butter, 1956. Pixie sticks, 1959. And Topps whistle pops, 1975. So it's going to be a long, hard road to <laughs> to a real artificial general intelligence, I think. At least yeah. one that knows anything about junk foods. Yeah. But you know, we should be hired for that. Well, <laughs> I mean, we don't need to be artificial intelligences. We are actual intelligences. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I think I could, I would say that you probably know more than the average person about junk food, right, Alyssa? Maybe. I mean, if you ask most people, they wouldn't know what your Pop-Tarts were invented, would they? No. Do you think if you ask most people, they'd be able to tell you the origin of the name Chips Ahoy, why it's called Chips Ahoy? After they watch this show, they will. Well, Liz, where have you heard that saying before? Or something that sounds like it, Chips Ahoy? Ahoy matey. Yeah, like ahoy matey. It's a pun on a nautical term, really. It's uh, generally the etymology is the word ahoy probably comes from the Middle English word hoy, which was like a way to, to hail somebody. Like hoy. Saying, yeah, hoy. It's like hi or hey. It's essentially the same sound. Hey. In fact, did you know this? When Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, he thought that when you answered a phone, you should say ahoy. Hoy? Yeah, hoy, hoy. Um, that's what Alexander Graham Bell would have had us all saying, but Thomas Edison thought that hello sounded better and most people agreed. So now you pick up a phone and you say hello. Or I say hey You say hey hey You know, it's funny. Uh, grandpa, when he picks up the phone, says yellow. Yellow. I like the color. Yeah. I always thought that was funny. And Uncle Alvaro says bueno. What he about orange? I don't think anybody answers the phone and says orange. Maybe your brother would. I'll say green. You'll say green when you answer the phone? <laughs> Wait, ready, Dad? Pretend yeah. you're on the phone. Oh, okay. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Bring, bring. Green. Uh, this must be a wrong number. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Spam I, I, call. Oh, I knew I was going to do that, too. Uh, yeah, anyway, Liz, like, if you were on a ship, on a boat, a big boat. We're and going you... on a ship and a favorite rocket ship. Thank you, little Einstein. If Eating you saw. Our chips Ahoy chips. Oh, my goodness. Crisps. Liz. What? If you saw another boat or you wanted them to see you, you would say ship ahoy or ships ahoy. It was like a way to call out that you could see something there because ship ahoy. Yeah, this was in the days before radios. It was like pirate slang, like you said, like land ho, ships ahoy, that kind of thing. Oh my gosh. That just reminded me of Jake and the Netherland pirates. Right, because they're pirates. (laughs) This is the kind of stuff that they might say. Yes. And in fact, Nabisco says that that is the origin of the name but there were a few uses of the term chips like actual chocolate chips chips ahoy in the years leading up to 1963 that were popular before 
Nabisco used it. The first was a Charles Dickens story. It's called The Uncommercial Traveler. There was a guy named Chip. He was on a boat and he was taunted by a talking rat that was threatening to sink the ship and eat him. And he kept saying, Chips Ahoy, Chips Ahoy. Chips Ahoy, Chips Ahoy, give him my cookies. Yeah. And then later in 1956, there was a Chip and Dale cartoon from the Walt Disney Company that starred Donald Duck. And it was also called Chips Ahoy. And that one, Liz, is one of my all-time favorites. Just a hoy, just a hoy, give me my cookies. When I, well, yeah, they don't actually say it in this cartoon, but it was, um, it was featured on an episode of The Wonderful World of Disney when I was a kid, and we taped it off TV on our old Betamax VCR, and uh, it had the first half of The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh on it as well. I think the title on our tape was just Ch- Chip and Dale and Winnie the Pooh, and uh, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree was that part of The Many Adventures. That was a good junk food movie as well, Liz. Have you ever seen Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree? I've seen Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, Winnie the Pooh eats too much honey and he's, he's too round and his tummy gets stuck in the hole into Rabbit's Den and he can't get out. Oh, I saw that Remember one. Remember that one? It, wasn't he looking in a mirror? That's right. And then he finally gets out and he uh, ends up flying up into the honey tree and he gets stuck inside where there's all that honey and he's like swimming in it and it looks delicious. I wanted to swim in a honey tree. Yeah. Anyway, in that uh, cartoon, Chip and Dale get the best of Donald Duck on a little sailboat. It's great. Do you know, Liz, there's also a Minnesota rock band called The Hold Steady. Have you ever heard anything by them? No. I think you may have heard at least one song. I play them in the car sometimes. I really like them. Uh, They have a song called Chips Ahoy. And in that song, it's referring to the name of a racehorse that a girl bets on. And uh, in fact, this song is not actually about the horse. It's like every other Hold Steady song. It's about a girl. Yeah. Liz, this all would have been free advertising for Nabisco. Yeah. Chips Ahoy, the cartoon, Chips Ahoy in the Dickens book, Chips Ahoy, the Hold Steady song. But uh, as we're about to find out, Chips Ahoy are not really like great chocolate chip cookies. That's kind of a spoiler, I guess. But I think everybody knows this already. But yeah. over the years, they've had really strong advertising that's kept them in the public eye since the 60s. Yeah. I watched an old 1960s era advertisement for Chips Ahoy this morning on YouTube. Listen, they had a mascot. Oh, he, was it a cookie? <laughs> well, the mascot now is a cookie. The original mascot was a superhero, and his name was Liz. What do you think his Chip. name was? No, well, the cookie now is named Chip, but the original Ahoy. mascot <laughs> was not named Ahoy. You Bob? Were close. Uh, Bill? His name was Cookie Man. Oh. Yeah, it's very original, isn't it? Wow. But Cookie Man's alter ego was a mild-mannered snacker. His name was Mort Meek. Mort Meek. That is a great name, I think. We need to add that to our junk food dictionary. Mort Meek. Yeah, that's like uh, Steve Martin, Gern Blanston era vibes there. That's a good Gern one. Burn. So Mort Meek would be trying to enjoy all 16 chocolate chips in his Chips Ahoy cookie. And then like some villain would come by and try to steal his treat. And uh, Mort Meek would slink away and then he would return as the superhero cookie man. Oh my God. He was in like a big padded muscle suit and he had a logo on his chest, which was not like a superhero emblem. It was just the Nabisco logo. Oh. Yeah. The one I watched today was, I think, from 1963 or 64. And uh, Mort Meek was on the moon eating Chips Ahoy cookies and he was attacked by an alien crab monster who stole his cookies. And then he fell into a moon hole and came out as Cookie Man and beat up the crab monster and got his cookies back. Whoa. It looked like a bad episode, like an, a very low budget episode of Star Trek. It was very bad. Oh. Although it's funny, Star Trek didn't start until 1966, I think. So this would have actually, if those dates are right, predated Star Trek. Whoa. Yeah, it's bad stuff. It's very corny, but it was effective. I mean, people would look at this and say, oh, I want to eat chocolate chip cookies because of <laughs> Cookie Man, I guess. There was one time before basketball practice, we ate way too many chips ahoy and we all got sick. Yeah, that sounds exactly like something you and the basketball team would do. Yeah. But it wasn't because of Cookie Man. No. And it probably wasn't because of Cookie Guy, who was the mascot that Cookie Man eventually morphed into. He was not a superhero anymore. Instead, he was uh, like a cookie, like an anthropomorphic cookie (laughs) that had arms and legs and walked and talked and this big, weird grin. And I did not like Cookie Guy at all. That's really scary. No, I didn't care for him at all. And in fact, Liz, the current mascot is another anthropomorphic cookie mascot named Chip. He's a little bit cuter. He's not like, you know, a sassy 90s, 2000s cookie like Cookie Guy was. Chip tries to be very current with youth culture, and uh, it's not working. The internet is dunking on Chip like left and right. What does that mean? It means like Chip is trying to do youth slang in cookie commercials. Uh, In one commercial, Chip 
had like some bedazzled rings on and said that his chip drip was impeccable and everyone was like no chip not cool i like that you don't have the juice and then in another one uh they tried to do like an among us thing where there were two chips and he said one was the imposter but it was after among us had already been popular so everyone was like guys you're like a year too late on this (laughs) yeah they should do prime oh like get let do a cross promotion with prime let chip drink some prime yeah. Listen, because of the big corporate structure, by the time they actually got that together and approved and produced and out, Prime would be completely done. Chip and his drip with his Prime. Yeah. That's hydrating. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable <laughs> for me. It's very like, I don't want to say the word cringy because that's You're cringy become now. cringy <laughs> itself. Yeah, exactly. But I, it's weird. I feel bad for this fake cookie because of how dopey he is. I like him, Chip he, Drip. You like Chip Drip? <laughs> is that what you're going to call him now? Chip Drip. Chip Drip. Well, listen, Chip Drip is not working. But one thing that the brand has always put a big emphasis on, you could even see it as far back as the Cookie Man commercials in the 60s, is how many chocolate chips were actually in Chips Ahoy cookies. How many, Dad? Well, it's changed over the years. I mean, there was this concern way back then. Remember, we've talked about food purity laws and things like that. Yeah. Well, even in the 60s, companies were still concerned that consumers would think that they were trying to cheap out on ingredients or configurations. So Nabisco would really highlight that they had lots of chocolate chip cookies, lots of chocolate chips, I should say, in the cookies. In the 60s, they would tell everybody there are 16 chocolate chips in every cookie. Does that seem like a lot or not a lot? Mm, That seems like a lot for a little cookie. Yeah, it probably does, right? In the 80s, when there was competition from other cookies like Keebler brands, they increased the count. They bumped it up to 32 chips in every cookie. I could never. That seems like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I think they knew that too, because later they amended it down to 24 and they changed the slogan from 16 chips in every cookie to just betcha bite a chip. Betcha bite a chip. I kind of like that. That one's fun to say. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to eat the cookie without the chips. Uh, well, we did a little experiment and I'll tell you why that's going to be pretty hard for you to do. So after Betcha Bite a Chip, they changed the slogan again and they would say this one, which is kind of stuck with people. I think people actually remember this. They would tout that there were a thousand chips in every bag and the slogan changed to 1000 chips delicious. I remember that actually from my childhood. Magically delicious. It sounds a lot like that in the cadence, actually. A thousand chips delicious. That's exactly the way that I think of it too. And Liz, this was tested. It wasn't just an empty promise. Theory. Yeah, it wasn't just a food theory. Did you ever watch that guy on YouTube, food theory guy? No. Your cousin Jackson likes him a lot. Shout out to Jack and Julian. Okay. Listen, in 1996, there was the third grade class in North Carolina, and they did an experiment where they got a box of Chips Ahoy cookies, and they counted all the chocolate chips, and they only came up with 680 chips, well short of 1,000. So they wrote a very sternly worded letter to Nabisco. Now, here's the thing. It turns out that uh, since they were just third graders and didn't really know what they were doing, they had only counted the chips on the surface of the cookies list. They didn't get any that were baked inside of the cookie. Yeah. Oh, my God. There were many more. And in fact, Nabisco proved that by doing an experiment and showing them that if you dissolve the cookies in water, you could reclaim the chips. You could rinse them out. The final count in their box of chocolate chip cookies from Chips Ahoy, 1,182 chips. Wow. People love this list. It was a big deal. Sales of Chips Ahoy cookies increased 20% after that. Holy moly. Yeah, Nabisco made the Thousand Chip Challenge part of their marketing strategy. They had Bill Nye, the science guy, on board. They even partnered up with the Air Force Academy and had them analyze 42 different bags of cookies, which determined that 93% of those boxes contained more than the advertised 1,000 chips. Has there ever been one that is only 1,000? Exactly 1,000? Yeah. I mean, probably, yeah, I would imagine so. There's a lot of variation in industrial processes like that. And as long as you keep your statistical process controls kind of in line with upper and lower control limits, you can organize around an average like a thousand. So they, yeah, they probably hit a thousand. Liz. What? I wanted to test this. Yes, you did. So I did it this morning. Yes, you did. It was moderately scientific, I'll say. Not very rigorous, but we were kind of strapped for time. Yeah. So here's what we did. We took one cookie out of the box, a single Chips Ahoy cookie, and we weighed it on our kitchen scale. It weighed 11 grams. We divided that into the amount of grams in a regular box of cookies, which for us, because we had a 13-ounce box, came about to between 33 and 34 cookies per box. So we gave them the benefit of the doubt. We said 34 cookies in a box of Chips Ahoy cookies. Then we took one single 11-gram cookie, and we dissolved it in waterless. Mm -hmm. 
We washed out the chocolate chips. We counted them. There were 25 intact chocolate chips and then like a bunch of little chocolate flecks. So I rounded that up to 26. Yes. Liz, what's 26 times 34? 884. 884. So in this case, there were fewer than a thousand chips in our box. But Liz. What? It turns out if you actually look at those commercials, the fine print says that the claim is only for 18 ounce or larger packages. Yeah. Ours was just 13 ounces. So if we extrapolate that number, we would have more. way more than a thousand, thousand chips in an 18 ounce package. Exactly. So yeah, they are a thousand chips delicious. Yeah. Liz. What? This year is kind of like the end of an era for those traditional advertising campaigns, though. Why? Well, I found out that uh, Chips Ahoy is going to abandon what they call traditional linear television advertising this year. Do you know what that is? Linear television advertising? No. It's just like the ad buys that you do for commercials on regular broadcast TV. Like, not streaming, not DVR, not internet banners, just commercials on TV. Oh, so like the... (laughs) Yes. Without the banner part. Yeah, so like if we're just watching a baseball game on TV during the inning breaks, there will be commercials. You're not going to see any Chips Ahoy commercials on television anymore. It's going to be all digital marketing, mostly through streaming outlets. Yeah. That's kind of a big deal. Uh, Nabisco spends $23 million a year on Chips Ahoy marketing. Wait, oh. Yeah, that's a a big ad spend for cookies. That's a lot. That's yeah. right. And you remember they're doing about $620 million in revenue every year. So that's a not insignificant chunk of that revenue spent on advertising to continue revenue generation. How much do you like get like if you were to work there and do the cookies, like make them? If you were a baker for Nabisco making Chips Ahoy cookies? Yes. How much money would you make? Like roughly. Well, I don't know for sure. Most of the actual cookies are baked by large industrial machines. There are people that work in the factories to run the machines, but typically in the United States, we do not pay factory production workers very well. Oh. Yeah. It's sort of like, uh, strangely enough, considered lower skilled or unskilled labor. Well, what if you were the manager of it? Well, managers generally make more than workers. Yeah. I don't know. That's something we'll have to look up. If you work for Nabisco making Chips Ahoy cookies, and you'd like us to know how much money you make, you can tweet at us at JunkFeudPod or send us an email to JunkFeudPod at gmail.com. Unless you are Bill Gates or Elon Musk, we don't need to know. That's right. We don't care how much money you have. It's an incomprehensible number to us. (laughs) Yes. That's right. It's incomprehensible to me, Alyssa, that if you're a kid and you wake up and you watch whatever is left of Saturday morning cartoons, that you will not see any Chips Ahoy cookie commercials. That's such a strange thing. It's a brave new world. Yeah. You know, speaking of little kids watching commercials for cookies, Liz, we have to talk about our favorite little kid. My favorite little kid? Your favorite little kid. What about mom's favorite little kid? Definitely mom's (laughs) favorite little kid. Your brother, Chase. Friend of the show, Chase. uh, Host of our sister show, Health Feud. Liz, your brother does not like junk food. No, he does not. No. He despises. The only junk food that he eats our chips ahoy cookies and ice pops uh, ice pops too yes that's true now that's a relatively and Lay's new chips yeah i don't think he even can sit i think that's like the closest to a vegetable that he eats is lays potato yes. chips but he loves chips ahoy cookies in the blue bag he doesn't call them chips ahoy he just says the crunchy cookies that's all he calls them and yeah. he has a special way to ask for them too what's his ritual Five crunchy cookies. Yeah, that's right. When he's hungry for a snack, he says the same thing. He says, I will wish for some five crunchy cookies. It's always five. He will not eat four cookies. He will not eat six cookies. It has to be five. And he has to have them in one of those little plastic snack bowls that he has. And now he has to have them with a cup of milk on the side, which he will not dunk the cookies into the milk, but he will drink the milk and get the little crumb goobers in it. Yes. Heaven help you, Alyssa, if you stand between this boy and his some five crunchy cookies. Yeah. It's very funny that, like, I think I remember how that happened. He would say, I want crunchy cookies. And we would try to have him coach him to say things like, may I please have some crunchy cookies? And he took that to mean, I will like some five crunchy cookies because he wanted us to know exactly how many he was going to have. But he also wanted to use the polite words that we were teaching him. So some stayed in there. He remembered that. And it has to be five and they have to be crunchy cookies. He will not even eat the chewy ones. Yeah, no, he hates them. That's right. And we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between crunchy and chewy cookies a little bit later. But right now, Liz, I want to talk about something a little bit weird. What? At least twice, Chips Ahoy cookies have been linked to outbursts of crime, Alyssa. 
What? Yeah, like actual criminal activity. In 2015, in Belleville, Illinois, there was an alleged shooting, Alyssa, a shooting that was linked to an argument over a pack of Chips Ahoy cookies and and, uh, a sum of $8. That's kind of crazy. You want to hear even crazier? A year earlier in 2014, also in Illinois, but this time in Decatur, there was a man who choked his roommate while she was in the bathtub because he had accused her of eating three of his Chips Ahoy cookies. She thought that he was playing around when he said, if you eat my Chips Ahoy, I will kill you. And then she did. And then he did. Yeah. Yeah. Cookies, $8, nuts. Liz, (laughs) I've told you this story before. Yes. I need to tell it now. It's a story also about a roommate being unreasonable about Chips Ahoy cookies. Yeah. But this time the roommate was me. Yeah. Okay, so you know that I went to college. I had some roommates. One of them was a guy named Yimbo. Yimbo and I liked to watch pro wrestling on Monday nights. Monday Night Raw would come on, and before it would come on, we would go to the cafeteria or the grocery store, and we would get what we called raw snacks. Yeah. Raw snacks were usually, for me anyway, Cool Ranch Doritos and a box of chewy Chips Ahoy cookies. Yeah. And sometimes we we would go to the combination KFC Taco Bell in the cafeteria, and we would get chicken strips with like disgusting ranch dressing that they had that was always a little bit too warm. And then from the Taco Bell side, a chicken or a steak quesadilla. And we called that the fat boy combo. That was the chicken strips and the quesadilla together. Oh. Right. But anyway, we would bring the snacks back to our dorm or our apartment, and we would eat Chips Ahoy, chewy chocolate chip cookies, and Cool Ranch Doritos while we watched wrestling. But then... If we didn't eat all of the cookies, a thing happened where, you know, sometimes roommates uh, don't really set their boundaries very well and they'll like eat each other's snacks. Yes. And a thing would happen where we would always eat all the chewy Chips Ahoy cookies and we would get mad at each other about who would be eating more of them. So we did this thing where whenever I would buy the red box of chewy Chips Ahoy cookies, I would put them in a little mini fridge that I kept in my bedroom next to my bed. And the tacit agreement was, if something's in the mini fridge in the room, it's not in the big fridge in the kitchen, that means it's off limits. It's not fair game. It's like your own private stash, right? Yes. So here's a funny thing. And Yimbo would later tell me that this was a trick that his mother had taught him, which we all thought was hilarious, and his mom included. Shout out to Maria. He would sneak into my bedroom when I wasn't there. (laughs) And he would go into the little mini fridge next to the bed, and he would use scissors to open up the pack of chewy chips ahoy cookies so that it looked like it hadn't been like torn open and then he would take an equal number of cookies from each sleeve from each side of the tray and then rearrange them so it looked like they hadn't been disturbed and then he would very very carefully put the tray back into the sleeve and reseal it with a tiny little piece of tape and put it back in the fridge so he would steal the chewy chips ahoy cookies and try to make it look like it hadn't happened. And obviously you can see that a bag has been opened and taped back shut. It was not exactly like the cat burglary of the century or anything like that. So one time I I called him on it. I said, have you been sneaking into my room and opening my personal fridge and opening my cookies and making it look like you haven't been taking them out and then resealing them? And then he just said, yeah, "Mm, no. (laughs) Yeah. And I said, well, who could possibly have been doing this? You live in this room with me. And he said, I don't know. Must have just come like that. And then like years later, we were all sitting around the table at his at his house with his family. And he was explaining that, oh, yeah, I did actually sneak in there and steal the cookies because my mom taught me to uh, to make it look like you hadn't stolen any snacks from anybody. And that way you could get away with it. And she was like aghast and mortified at this. But we all thought it was very hilarious. Big laugh. Everybody, That's everybody had a great funny. time. It was really silly. Yeah. Let's. Uh, remembering fun times like that, fun foods is of course part of nostalgia and the things that keep, uh, snacks like Chips Ahoy popular. It's nostalgia list. It's not quality. Yeah. These are not good cookies by any means, are they? No. No, of course not. And I want to make a a quick note of that because what, Alyssa, what even is a Chips Ahoy crunchy chocolate chip cookie? Because when you look at that thing and when you taste it and when you smell it, it doesn't taste like a chocolate chip cookie to me. It tastes. Okay, so it's um, it's a hard cookie. Yeah. It's just flour with a little bit of chocolate 
<laughs> it just tastes like chocolatey flour to you. Yes. Yeah, I I don't I don't know what it is. They're missing all like the key flavor components that I would argue would make up a good chocolate chip cookie. If you uh listen, when we make chocolate chip cookies at home, they don't taste anything like a Chips Ahoy. Mm-mm. We got that big fresh baked chocolate chip cookie from the coffee potter yesterday. Chips Ahoy tastes nothing like that. No. They have no textural heterogeneity. It's all just like the same crumbly crunch from edge to edge. Uh, if you have a good cookie, you expect it to have like a crisp edge and then a chewy ring around that and a gooey center. The chocolate chips in Chips Ahoy don't actually taste like chocolate at all. They're dull. They have no depth. Yeah. There's no butteriness to the cookie like you would expect with a good chocolate chip cookie because there's no butter in the chocolate chip cookies here in the Chips Ahoy. Yeah. Yeah. They just have like that single depth of flavor with the the sweetness because the sugars aren't getting caramelized because it doesn't seem like there's any brown sugar in there. You're not getting any butterscotchy or caramely essence. You get all this when you taste them too, right? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of this, I don't have the very, very strong nostalgia for Chips Ahoy like a lot of people do because I didn't really eat them when I was a kid. Grandma, my mom would never let us have these growing up, mostly because she would make her own homemade chocolate chip cookies, which were way, way better. And also because she didn't want us to be spending money on like empty processed junk foods. And uh, I think mostly, most of all, because to her, they weren't actually chocolate chip cookies. They were like something else entirely. Yep, she was right. Yeah, I think she was right, actually. I don't I don't think it's wrong to say Chips Ahoy crunchy chocolate chip cookies are their own thing. Like, I wouldn't weigh them up against a homemade chocolate chip cookie. I would say they stand in a category all their own. Yeah. And in fact, Liz, speaking of categories of cookies, Nabisco's big brand Oreo has lots of different varieties in their category of chocolate sandwich cookies, and Chips Ahoy continues to experiment with new varieties as well. Really? Have you seen any of these weird flavors, Liz? I don't think so, actually. So there's a website, taquitos.net. They say there are, at current, 27 different kinds of Chips Ahoy cookies that you can buy, including, uh, at one point, root beer float Oreo cream filled Chips Ahoy cookies. How's that for corporate synergy, Liz? Great. There are both Reese's Cups and Reese's Pieces Chips Ahoy, S'mores Chips Ahoy. There was even, at one point, a chocolate banana flavor of Chips Ahoy cookies. Chocolate banana? Yeah. And if you go on the Mondelez International brand page for Chips Ahoy. There are 36 different product configurations for Chips Ahoy. Wow. Yeah. Mash.com a couple years ago tried 15 different varieties to see which ones were the best. Uh, They said original was 13th out of 15, which is almost last. Yeah. Yeah. Yuck. Chewy was number seven. Chewy peanut butter cups was number one. Uh, We also watched this morning Rhett and Link on Good Mythical Morning about four years ago. They tried a bunch of store-bought chocolate chip cookies. They had Crunchy Chips Ahoy like right in the middle, I think third overall. Mrs. Fields was their favorite. We were just at a store or somewhere. What was the thing that looked, I told you it looked like the guy from Good Mythical Morning. Oh, you were talking about me. I had the uh, cartoon emoji on my phone. <laughs> yeah, remember? No. Yeah, that's what it was. It was on your phone? Mm-hmm. You FaceTimed me from the hotel the other day. <gasps> oh, yeah. Remember? Whatever those, like whatever those things are called, memojis, yeah. Because it has like a big shock of white hair on mine, which is which is pretty funny. I mean, it looks like you. Well, yeah. I mean, that's how they do it. Anyway, Liz, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Chips Ahoy, debut 1963. Chewy Chips Ahoy, 20 years later, 1983 come out, and they quickly gain a cult following, partially, I think, in because they're just so different than the original variety in both texture and flavor. Really? Yeah. What do you think about this, about the difference between Chewy and Crunchy Chips Ahoy? If you had to pick a side, which one do you think you would be on? Probably Chewy. Probably Chewy. See, it's a very controversial, a very divisive topic, quite divisive, in fact, amongst junk food aficionados. There's a guy named Dave Portnoy. He's the president of a website called Barstool Sports. In 2014, he made a post on the site. He said that Crunchy Chips Ahoy was the only right answer. Everyone that thought otherwise was an idiot, although he said overall they're not very good. Uh, They're a 6 out of 10 store-bought cookie. So even though he prefers crunchy over chewy, he says the crunchy are not very good. On the Unpopular Opinion subreddit, it is one of the most reposted topics. Thousands of comments and strong opinions on either side about which one is better. Red versus blue. Crunchy and chewy. And... Some of the things that people will cite is that the chewy cookies seem to have a weird aftertaste and cannot absorb milk when you dunk them. Have you noticed that when you eat them? 
The what? They have like kind of a weird aftertaste to them. After you eat them, there's a taste that lingers in your mouth that's not exactly pleasant. Have you noticed that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll kind of be on the lookout. And also, if you dunk them into milk, the they don't actually suck up any of that milk. You're right. Yeah, they, it just kind of all comes out. That's right. It just kind of sloughs off the top. Uh, the crunchy cookies, of course, are generally said to be too dry and crumbly, which I think is a common perception of those. Yeah. For what it's worthless, today, I asked friend of the show, Jim... Uh, my other college roommate, which one he liked, and he said Chewy was a 10 out of 10, Crunchy was a 1 out of 10, even though he knew that's not how we rank the cookies. Yeah. So yeah, for sure, Chewy his favorite. And Liss. What? It's now time. For? For my favorite part of the show. Alyssa, oh my god. <laughs> Alyssa reads the ingredients. Now look, you don't have to read all these. I put the ingredients for both Crunchy and Chewy Chips Ahoy here. So you can read just the blue ones, just Crunchy, just the top, okay? Okay. But Crunchy's longer. Uh, you know, I think they're actually about the same. Anyway, go ahead. Let's hear it. Okay. Chips Ahoy, chocolate chip cookies, the crunchy variety in the blue bag. Here we go. Unbleached, enriched flour, wheat flour, niacin, reduced iron, diamond mononitrate, vitamin B1, riboflavin. You say that different every time. I still don't know how to say it. (laughs) Vitamin B2, folic acid, Semi, semi-sweet semi chocolate chips, sugar, chocolate, cocoa butter, dextrose, milk, soy lecithin, sugar, canola oil, palm oil, a high fructose corn syrup, leavening, baking soda, ammonium, phosphate, salt, artificial flavor, caramel color, or, uh, natural flavor. Yeah, so the funny thing here is that in the chewy cookies in the red box, The ingredients are mostly the same. They're just organized in a different way. There's a higher ratio of high fructose corn syrup, sugar, and palm oil in the chewy cookies than there are in the crunchy cookies. And uh, the chocolate and cocoa and the chocolate chips is pushed way down. So, Dad, that is 300 words. 300 words in uh, in the ingredients for Chips Ahoy chocolate chip cookies, the crunchy variety. That's a lot. At least that's what it says. Yeah, that's more than I think we would include if we were making chocolate chip cookies ourselves at home. Yeah. For sure. So, again, some some very weird, very slight differences in the order of the ingredients, which tells us about how much is in each of these cookies. So there's got to be something going on in the processing of them, in the baking of them as well. But, Liz, we're going to find that all out right now because it's time to get down to the rules of the game. Yes. Junk Feud is a culinary clash to see which treat will be crowned the undisputed champion of snacks. It's a King of the Mountain style battle in which the reigning champ takes on a new challenger each week to see which snack reigns supreme. And Alyssa, yeah, the reigning defending undisputed champion of snacks is Butterbeer. Butterbeer, of course. Butterbeer won again last week. It absolutely trounced black jelly beans. And uh, I absolutely downed. Two cream sodas. <laughs> to wash out the taste of the black jelly beans right afterwards? Yes. I know. Uh, black jelly beans never stood a chance. It was not even remotely close. Your boo-boo face gave it away, of course, from the first second of the recording. And I have uh, not boo-boo face, but I know it's going to go down in this episode. Well, this I'm worried, though. I mean, Butterbeer might become complacent after such an easy victory. Do you think it's going to let its guard down? Is this what they call a trap game, Alyssa, for Chips Ahoy? Maybe. Well, let's find out because we need to introduce our challenger today. We are trying Chips Ahoy chocolate chip cookies, the old standard in the blue box, the king of all the grocery store chocolate chip cookies, the original list, some five crunchy cookies. Yes. But wait, Alyssa. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously, as prophesied. Uh, here comes Chewy Chips Ahoy in the red box. Liss. Yes. The ultimate showdown, red versus blue, part two, just like we did with Doritos before them. Dad, when Chips Ahoy, when our Chips Ahoy episode comes out on YouTube, can we put a poll up and see how many people like crunchy versus soft? Uh, yeah, I guess we can. We can do that on Spotify and uh, some of our other podcast platforms as well. Oh. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll do it on Twitter too, and maybe even Instagram. All the socials. <laughs> yes. So, Lissa. Yes. It's crunch time. Crunch time. We rate our snacks using a tier list from sprinkles to fun dip. Sprinkles to fun dip. So snacks can be graded A, B, C, D, or F with the very best treats earning the elusive S tier ranking. The following contest is scheduled for one serving. One serving. And is for the undisputed championship of junk food. 
junk food. Liz, I have here a plate. Those are soft. On this plate, we have some five crunchy cookies and some five chewy cookies. Yes. So we do not have the packages in front of us right now, but we can talk very briefly about what the packages look like. I am old enough to remember the old boxes of Chips Ahoy cookies. Why? Which, well, because I'm oh, old. Come on. You, <laughs> I walked right into that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Look, the old boxes were not very striking. Uh, some of them were blue, but... The artistry on them was lacking a little bit. I will say that the boxes that they have now, the packages, I should say, that they have now are very well done from a graphic design standpoint because they are 100% on brand. You can look very quickly down the aisle and know exactly what you're looking for, which is the big, bright, shiny blue box or red box of cookies. So great job on the packaging. Now, I want to focus for a moment on the smell of these things. So here, take one of the crunchy cookies. They smell good. They do smell good. They smell vaguely chocolatey. Like not, there's not a strong, overwhelming, overpowering dark chocolate scent. Here guys, smell them. You are holding the cookie up to the microphone. We have not, we have not yet invented. uh, Ew, it's on the microphone. Well, that's your own fault. Okay. You know, it's funny when your mom and I were dating, we used to watch a lot of the Food Network and we would watch Emerald Live every night at like, you know, eight or 10 o'clock or whatever it came on on the Food Network. And Emerald's thing was that he wished that people at home could smell what he was cooking in the studio. And he said he wanted them to have smell of vision. Smell it. So you, smell it through the smell of vision. Yeah. Unfortunately, you cannot smell the chocolate chip cookies. But I'll say I like the way that these smell. They don't smell exactly like a chocolate chip cookie fresh out of the oven smells. Like, you know, that that sort of weird alchemy that you get from the butter and the sugar and the vanilla all mixed together and then baking. The chewy cookies have it a little bit less, I'll say. But the the scent is still there. It's this weird, like, toasty vanilla flavor. I kind of like it. Or like a butter. Yeah, like almost, it's almost buttery. (laughs) I inhaled it. You inhaled a chip? Yeah, it's not, it's, to me, it's not quite buttery, but there's definitely something of like... Can we just eat this now? (laughs) All right, you want to eat them? Yeah. Go ahead. So you picked up... No, Dad, you have to say that it's crunch time. Yeah, we already said it's crunch time, bud. Oh. You want me to say it again? Yeah. It's crunch time. No, in your fun voice. In the fun voice? Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. It's crunch time. (laughs) (laughs) That wasn't fun? That was fun. That was like Captain Crunch, actually. Okay, take your soft cookie. Uh, I'm going to, no, we're going to try the crunchy ones first. Uh, Yeah, because we want, that's the baseline that we're judging against. So you can pick up a crunchy cookie. Whoa, dad, look. Yeah, it's weighing down the plate. The uh, You should uh, make a note of that, Alyssa. When I weighed these earlier, the crunchy cookies are like 11 grams. The chewy cookies were like 17, 18, I think. They were substantially more stout. Okay. Three, two, one, go. All right. It's going in. All right. So first of all, bet you bite a chip. Yes. Check. You you simply cannot eat these without getting a chocolate chip in them. The chips are so well dispersed throughout the cookie. I'm going to do it now. You're not going to be able to do it. You're just going to make a mess. You're going to get crumbs all over the place. And speaking of crumbs, these are very dry very, very crumbly cookies. There is no like soft gooey center. The people that like underbaked chocolate chip cookie dough style cookies are going to get nothing out of this. There is sort of like a craggy crackly top. The bottoms are completely uniform. The brown color throughout is again uniform on them. The chips do taste like chocolate, but not overwhelmingly so. Like there's no dark semi-sweet, bittersweet chocolate notes from these at all. It's just like very standard very grocery store-ish chocolate chip. I'm using that term like it's derogatory, but it's not. Eh, they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. I mean, what I get from these is a lot of toastiness, like a lot of toasted flour, a fair amount of a very standardized sweetness straight throughout, like no depth or complexity to it. No butterscotch, no caramel, no toffee, no molasses, nothing like that. Just straight sugar. A little bit of vanilla, more salt, I think than I expected, which is good. It actually is a nice contrast to the sweetness in these. So these things make you so thirsty. They're really dry. Yeah, super dry. You need milk with these. <clears throat> but again, like they're not good chocolate chip cookies, but they're good whatever they are. Whoa, wait, Dad, look, ready? So it starts here, they're even, and then it goes Shh. Yeah. We're we've picked up the chewy chips ahoy cookies now. They're so heavy. They are much, much heavier, much, much denser. They look different. These look more like a small cake. Like if you if you very if you shrunk down a cake. And you were the size of like a Barbie or an action figure. These are more cake like than cookie like. And I mean c- cookie is probably 
the origination of that word is little cake. But, you know, I get what you mean with the butteriness in the scent of these lists because they smell almost like frosting, actually, like a buttercream. You get that? Oh, at all? yeah. Yeah, that's weird. I'm definitely picking up that aftertaste that people talk about when they eat the chewy cookies, which we're trying now. The texture, again, uniform throughout. This is like eating, I don't know, it's like eating a cupcake that's been compressed down very densely and packed with chocolate chips. That's kind of what this feels like to me. Yeah. It's a more pleasing texture for sure than the very dry, very crumbly one of the crunchy cookies. But again, not good. Like neither of these are good. Neither of these are good chocolate chip cookies, I should say. But they're very good for what they are, which is this unique thing all, all themselves. They're small, which is nice. If I needed to eat a lot of these, I probably would rather eat a lot of the chewy ones. But again, they don't taste like chocolate chip cookies at all. They're very oily. I'm getting a lot of the palm oil in these, I think. Yeah, definitely. I'm also surprisingly picking up less salt in the chewy ones than I did in the crunchy ones. Yeah. You're kind of quiet though, Liz. You don't really have very strong thoughts on these, do you? They're not the best, but they're not the worst. Yeah, well, I suppose we should get right to it and hit the bliss point list. What's the verdict? Who wins once and for all, red or blue, chewy or crunchy? Um, I'm going to go with crunchy just because wow. uh, they're an original. But otherwise, I would probably say these. Wow, Liz, I did not expect that from you. I was totally 100% expecting you to say the chewy Chips Ahoy cookies. They're just, look how dense they are. Yeah, they are. They're like little black holes of butter and sugar, although there's no butter. Or sugar. Wow. A lot of sugar. <laughs> Never mind. <clears throat> You're going in for another bite, just to be sure. Mm. I'm going to go with the crunchy ones, just because they are salty and they're good that way with salt. So what do you say? So you like blue crunchy cookies better than red chewy cookies from Chips Ahoy. What would you say for your rankings from Sprinkles to Fun Dip? You first. Me first? Wow. Okay. So in the battle of red versus blue, Alyssa, I can't believe I'm saying this. And if you had asked me before the show, I would not have said it this way. But right now, based on what we've just experienced, what we've talked about and what you said, I also think, I can't believe this, that the blue crunchy cookies are better than the red chewy cookies. There's something weird and artificial about that aftertaste. If you put a box of red chewy chips ahoy in front of me, yes, I'll eat the whole thing, of course. But I think, like you said, the essence of the toastiness, the mild chocolate, and that hit of salt in the crunchy cookies. I think that is better than whatever palm oil technological alchemy is going on in the chewy ones. So yeah, blue on top for me. I'll say B minus. B minus. I was going to say B flat. Yeah, B flat. B flat. So you say B for the blue crunchy cookies. I'll say B minus. I'll say C plus for the red chewy cookies. You will say B minus. B minus. So we're we're right next to each other in terms of distance away. So like one stratification in the letter grade away for each one. But blue on top of red, just barely. Neither of them very good. But Liz, what? How do they stack up against butterbeer? What do you think? No. No. That was a hard no. No chance, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I will say in doing the research for this episode and critically eating blue crunchy chips ahoy cookies instead of just like shoving a small pack of them into my mouth out of somebody's backpack when we're at like a zoo or something like that. I have a greater appreciation for what these things are and how large corporations are able to produce at scale in quantity, very large, still very satisfying bunches of a singular thing, which in this case is whatever a chocolate chip chips ahoy cookie is. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I like them. They're not as good as Butterbeer, which means your winner and still reigning, defending, undisputed champion of junk food. It's Butterbeer. It's Butterbeer. Liz. Oh, gosh. No Oreo rule today, but what we're going to do the next time we've got some time, which I think we we may actually have some time this week, we are going to buy an epoxy kit and we're going to try to preserve. We're going to do it ourselves? Yeah, we're going to do it ourselves. Oh, gosh. We're going to tr- we're gonna try to preserve one of the custom Oreo ID junk food Oreos in epoxy to see if we can keep it forever. Can we frame it in my room? If we are successful, yes, you can frame it and put it in your room. Okay. And of course, Liz, every week on this episode, we ask an important question. Can you deep fry this Obviously. week's snack? Yeah, of course. Will it deep fry? Uh, there is that inevitable link between Oreo cookies and Chips Ahoy cookies. Whatever somebody does to an Oreo, they will try to do to a Chips Ahoy. Yeah. There are tons of recipes online for deep fried Chips Ahoy. Most of them are your standard battered and fried, like uh, deep fried Oreo type style snack, but just with Chips Ahoy instead. Yeah. Although um, 
this was an interesting uh, and innovative practice, very economical. People were using boxed pancake mix as the batter for them. Huh. That's kind of smart. And then some people on TikTok are using their uh, air, fryer. air fryers, which of course is like a TikTok thing. Yeah. Listen, I have never actually encountered a deep fried Chips Ahoy cookie in the wild, like when we've been to carnivals and festivals and things like that. Lots oh. of deep fried Oreos. I've never seen deep fried Chips Ahoy, but if we do see one, I will try it. I will report back. Okay. And Alyssa. I'm so scared for this, Dad. It's time to check out the back of the box, a weekly segment where we play a little game. This week's segment is my all-time favorite, Alyssa Explains It All. Oh, God. On Alyssa Explains It All, I, an old, ask Alyssa, a child, about an item of youth culture, and she explains it to me. And this week on Alyssa Explains It All, Liz. Riz. It's Riz. (laughs) You're laughing. You know what this is? Yes. You know what Riz is? Well, I don't. So, Liz, I heard this word, Riz. Dad. Wait. I don't know what it means, but I think I might have an idea. Are you going to interrupt me (laughs) before I tell you what I think Riz means? Sorry, no. Okay. No, what were you going to say? I need to know. Don't tell me what it is because I need to let you know what I think it is first, though. Okay, so uh, people in my school, this is just not like what it is, but like a hint of what it is. Uh Uh-huh, okay. So people, if they're like good looking, they'll say, I'm the Wizard of Oz. Oh, the Wizard of (laughs) Oz. That's a good one. Okay, so yeah, I think I, I think I may know then. Okay. Uh, I think I'm on I think I'm on the right track here. Oh, so, <clears throat> uh, Liz, it's springtime now. Yes. Yeah. When it was spring and I was a little kid, there was this thing that my dad, your grandpa, used to say all the time that I thought was like just absolutely hilarious. It was like a little poem. Are you ready? Yes. Spring has sprung. The grass is riz. I wonder where the birdies is. Hmm. It was very silly. He would say it in like this Bugs Bunny voice. So great. I, as a child, I thought that was like the height of comedy. Because, you know, he's saying words wrong. But he was saying the grass is riz, like it has risen, it is rising. So I think, unfortunately, that's like too literal. Yeah. Kids are clever. So they probably, it's not like something is rising. I think they may have invented another meaning. And I think I know what it is. Oh. Okay. So uh, you know the Muppets, right, Liz? Yeah. Kermit and company. <laughs> uh, are you familiar with Rizzo the Rat? Yeah. Yeah, one of the best Muppets, right? He is inimitable as, we talked about this guy before, Charles Dickens as his friend Rizzo the Rat in The Muppet Christmas Carol. We talked about earlier the rat in the Charles Dickens book uh, that was talking to uh, our friend Chip and saying, Chips Ahoy, Chips Ahoy, we're going to eat you and your friends, that thing, right? So still on brand for the show. Okay. Yeah. So Rizzo the Rat, uh, still on, of course, on brand for junk food. He has a pizza restaurant in Disney World called Pizza Rizzo. Did you know that? No. Instead of a pizzeria, it's Pizza Rizzo. So, Liz, I think that based on what you've told me, the Wizard of Oz for the good looking people, Rizzo the rat, I think Riz means uh, related to or like a rat, like sneaky, like a rat, or like kind of like, you know, cool and like smooth like a rat might be. So, like, if I say to you, Liz, hit him with the Riz, that means you're going to be sneaky, right? You're going to be sneaky to somebody? No? Am I not right? <laughs> uh, actually. <laughs> Uh, no. no. No? No, you're not right. Okay, at all. so what does it mean? What is Riz then? Who is the Rizzard of Oz? You don't even know, do you? All of the boys say they are. All the boys say <laughs> they're the Rizzard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, Riz is like, say you like someone, uh-huh. and then you like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're so embarrassed right now. This is great. Keep going. I don't know what to say. Okay, so basically, it's like if you like someone. So uh-huh. say you, so dad, say you liked mom, right? I do like mom. So like put your finger like this. Okay. It looks like a hook. Yeah. Right? Sure. And then you make her look down. So you'd point at something on her shirt, right? Like say you have a stain, right? Like they'd made look, you look like that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. like they look down, right? And they go like this. And you hook them under the chin. Yes, like you're going to kiss them. So you have... Riz, oh. quote unquote. So if you said hit them with the Riz, that means you're trying to get a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Does it? Is that what it means? Yes. Like you're, oh, okay. So you like, you have the charisma to like no. get a girlfriend. That's kind of what it means. Riz, no. like charisma. Like people in my grade are like, oh yeah, bro. Bro, you think I'm, do you think I'll buff enough to riz up that girl? Riz up <laughs> that girl? <laughs> Oh no. I think that's what it is then. It's got to be it's got to be a short version of charisma. A sneaky rat. A sneaky little rat. Like you're going to hit him with the riz, you're going to sneak around until you get a girlfriend. Go riz on him. <laughs> oh, that was excellent. And Alyssa, uh this podcast should reach you in excellent condition. 
<laughs> Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. If you've got a question for us, you can write to the address on the label. That's junkfeudpod at gmail.com. Liz. Yes. Any final thoughts before we riz on out of here? No. <laughs> <laughs> Of course not, no. W Riz. Yeah, uh, this podcast has contained your recommended daily allowance of fun. fun. For more, go to Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you choose to be social and find us at Junk Feud Pod. You can watch fun-sized reviews on YouTube, buy our merch on Public, and don't forget to catch all the snacks in each and every week wherever you listen to podcasts. Until we see you again, for Alyssa, I'm Mike. Hasta lasagna. Don't get any on ya. Bye. Hit up with the Riz.